Calendar is turned to December. That means it's hockey time here in Wildcat country. Friday night action, the home opener. The Wildcat boys, the park of Cottage Grove Wolfpack, the visitors. Pleased to be joined again by Nathan Cron. I'm Mike Cook. And Nathan, Wildcats come into this one. They're two and one on this young season. Park, they got a one win in their first game the other night. But the Cats, a lot of positivity out of that first weekend. A lot of positivity out of the first weekend. The Cats did a good job of, of recovering from a lopsided score against Champlain Park. To pick up a big overtime winner from Grayson Robbins against the East Ridge Raptors. It's coincidentally, the East Ridge Raptors are awaiting the Park Cottage Grove Wolfpack in their next game. So it's going to be Raptors all over for these two teams. But tonight, it's about each other. It's an early season section game between two teams that play usually every other year. So, so it's not like they're ignorant of each other. They've seen each other before, these programs, but at the same time, when it comes to section seedings at the end of the year, games like this, as early as it is in this long, long hockey season, it still makes a big difference. You know, it's funny. You and I talked to both coaches before the game, and both were very aware of the section seedings, especially on the park side. You look at last year, 16-9-1 in the regular season. They had to go to Eastview in round one last year where they were knocked off in overtime by the Lightning. And you would think 16, 9, and 1 would get you a home game, but in this section, uh-uh. Yeah, well, it's not necessarily the case, but, you know, the Wildcats and the and the Wolfpack both are keenly aware of it. See, often, Mike, it's it's you don't usually have big games like this this early in the season. It's very common that things like this don't happen right away. Long shot. Gly with the save. That's Gabe Gly, senior netminder for the Wildcats. Number one. Back between the pipes starting. Jack Schneider had also going to see a fair amount of time this season for the Wildcats. And I know when you look at Johnny Rossman, Marcus Boniface on the JV, Coach Todd Carlson and company, they are very excited about what they have between the pipes. Well, they get good depth between the pipes. It also creates a lot of good competition. The issue for these Wildcats is can they create offensive chances like they did just there? Well, speaking of, A.J. Clark flying down that left wing. He's out there with the, Eddie Moore, one of the captains on this squad. 
Lance Murray, the other captain. Danny Lockemeyer, number 19, with the puck. He wears the A for the Wildcats here in this 23-24 campaign. So with 30 seconds into this one, one shot apiece here on ETV. Of course, we are your home for Wildcat sports. Aiden Miller between the pipes tonight for Park of Cottage Grove. And here comes Park the other way. They've got it. This is Judson Rood. Nearly an opportunity there. Park almost gets on the board. Now they do on a rebound. Gavin Moss lights the lamp. I was just about to say this trio of Rood, Moss, and Owen Corkus. A dangerous, dangerous trio for Parker Cottage Grove. Well, you saw it there. It wasn't the prettiest of, of goals. You know, it's certainly, from a style standpoint, you wouldn't rate it very highly. But you know what? You don't care because taking a look at this row, actually, we might have a replay. We've got work. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're still working on our, a little bit of technical issues. This is, you know, our first game of the season. But suffice to say, Moss doing a nice job there of cleaning up the garbage. And the Cottage Grove Wolfpack score 1-0. Gavin Moss. Assists number 18, Owen Corkish, and number 10, Jackson Rude. Rude got one of the assists I saw on that one. Yeah, your line mates get the two assists, so Rude yep. Corkish get the assist. Yep, there you go. There you Couldn't go. make out the first name. Thank you. Battle blow us here at center, Park Cottage Grove. We're in the greens with the white trim. We'll be moving left to right across your screen here in this one tonight. As we said, the home opener for these Egan Wildcats. Interesting enough, they played that East Ridge game the other night. That was at the Cottage Grove Arena. Little known fact kind of thing that East Ridge plays at Cottage Grove Arena. Yeah, well, and then of course there are multiple sheets there. The Absolutely. Wolfpack play on one sheet. Long Under shot goes just wide. And going off with a change, that was Briley Conkrong. Yeah, makes you wonder, it makes you kind of sometimes wonder who's got the home field advantage, home ice advantage for in any event. We're coming the Wildcats looking to get in deep. It's number 18 hustling in. For the Wildcats, that was Peyton Jensen. Jensen, it's weird to say a longtime defenseman, but he's been a defender for the last two years on this Wildcat squad. Moving up to a wing right now alongside Colin O'Leary and Garrett Koken. There's Jensen, big kid, likes to get, not afraid to get a little physical out there as 18 and white. Not afraid to get physical on the, on the, in the hockey ring, not afraid to be physical on the soccer field. Just a solid season here for the big pad Cats. save rebound puck is loose puck is somewhere Cottage Grove has it whistled that one just wide off the stick of number eight that was Michael Destacio he's out there with a line of number seven Max Kaplan and uh, Nick Bailey 28 in green and we've got a whistle of the hockey game I believe the Cats were offsides just under three minutes into this one as you look at Danny Lockenmeyer Nine goals in 30 career games for the man wearing the A for the Wildcats. And the Wildcats are going to be tested tonight. You know, Coach Todd Carlson talked before us, before the game with us, talking about how, you know, they, they were bounced back quickly when Eastridge scored. AJ Clark with another opportunity. That's his second shot on goal. In their last game and, that, and how they rebounded very quickly. Wildcats are going to have to show character here tonight. Park getting this one out, chasing it down. Number 19, Moss, part of that top trio. Your side is Dahlstrom, just a sophomore. Parks coach uh, Jeff Cork is saying that Dahlstrom, this kid's going to be 6'4, six, 6'5 six, someday, the, and he already plays that big. Long shot, that whistle's just wide of the cage. Six shots on goal already for the Wolfpack, two for the Wildcats with three and a half in. He looks for clicker in front of the student section. There you go, nice job defensively, Lockenmeyer to break that up. Cats cannot clear, however. Kept in near side, number six, Dahlstrom. Bumping there inside the circle. Back into the Wildcat zone. I think Park wanted to make a change, and they're going to get at least one defenseman off. There they go. Now they're making more of a change. That shot all the way down. Cat's going to put a fresh five out as well. Four minutes gone by, one nothing. Park. It's around far side. Dahlstrom and Green hustling in for the Wildcats. Give you that line out there right now of uh, Point Prong 24. Hudson Kerr is 11. 10 is Grayson Robbins. Grayson with that game winner against Eastridge last time out in the OT. Yep. Park tags up. Cats a little trouble getting control of the puck behind their own net. And Lance Murray will lead things out 
for the Wildcats with the new look Wildcats this year with the white jerseys, green breezers. Coach Carlson saying kind of a throwback to what they, some silver ones the Cats wore back in about 2006. Well, those uniforms certainly had some good mojo with them. And, you know, Coach Carlson, you know, if you're if you're trying to appease the gods of hockey, you'll do with everything, whatever you can to, to try to get the, them on your side. And if, if it takes throwback jerseys or something, some version of the throwback jersey, by all means do it. O'Leary on the draw for the Wildcats. Pistacio for Park. And taking out hard, Jensen knocks his man on the boards. That was uh, Wyatt Burling that was the recipient of that check. Berlin number two for Park. And we've got a penalty coming up on, it's going to be on the Wildcats. It is going to be a Cohen O'Leary. He's going to go for, I think, an elbow. Right below us here at the blow. Interference is going to be the call. Interference, okay. I, I thought maybe he got high with the elbow, but. Bottom line, two minutes for O'Leary. Time of this one will be 5-0-1. Unless, you know, we've heard about, like, the Minnesota Wild penalty kill, how bad that was earlier in this year. Yeah, well, Egan, Egan Power, the penalty kill right now is just four of eight. 50%. Well, it's a small sample size. Right? Absolutely. That's what we're going to go with. Absolutely. This gives this gives the this gives the uh, the Rude Moss Corkum line Corkish line the opportunity to really take it to the wild. Absolutely. Long wow. shot all the way. Never got through. That actually was blocked on down in front. Nice, nice block there by Egan's number 11. That's Kerr. Interesting. Coach Carlson saying Hudson Kerr. Yeah, they got him listed as a center, but he was going to probably play some D on the PK. Played defense earlier in his career here in Wildcat country. Mark, we're going to get something set up again. 30 seconds gone by in this power play. Circling back out this time with the puck. Number 18 is Moss. Or take that back. Corkish is 18. All the way across. No, didn't get good wood on it. Was rude that time. This rude Corkish Moss trio, they're all juniors. By the way, all juniors and they're all captains, which tells you a lot about tells you a lot about these, you know, the three players, the three young men, and their qualities and their leadership, that what they bring to the table, and it's really a, a big compliment for all the, for those three young men to be to be the captains of your team. By the way, those trio, 22 goals, 16 goals, and 24 goals last year for those three young men. Points were 59, 49, and 43. Top three scores on last year's Wolfpack squad. So, so one guy above 50, two guys above 40 points. I mean, that's just. I mean, I, I to be honest with you, Mike, I, the Wildcats. I, I'm trying to think of the last time the Wildcats had a 40 point guy. Uh, it's been a, it's wow. been a few years. It's been a few years. Yeah. I'll say it that way. Yep. Cats have always been a little more balanced. Long shot off of Murray. And Park is on the power play right now. It's about halfway through first power play of the game. Colin O'Leary sitting for the Wildcats at the moment. And Park's going to be forced to regroup from their own zone. Hope they come far side. This will be uh, Estacio bringing the puck forward. He'll dump it down there. He's got Bailey coming down that right side. He controls. Kept in just barely at the line. Nice block that time by, by uh, Pronk, or Conk, <laughs> Briley for the Wildcats. I'm going to get that name right this year yet. Briley Frank Prong. I heard they just call him KP a lot, too. We might have to go with that. Intercepted. Stacking the pads that time was Gly. After kind of almost a bad turnover there. It was costly for the Cats. Park keeping on the pressure. Got a man out front. That shot goes off of a Wildcat on the way through. That was Clark that got his stick on it. Up top, down in the circle. Shot. That hit traffic in front. That was more than got that one. Opportunity Wildcats. Here's Hudson Kerr. A.J. Clark. Clark, and that was a big save that time by the netminer, Aiden Miller. Great unselfish play by Kerr that time. He uses his body to shield off the defender. It sets up Clark for what was a solid try on goal. Isaac Martin, he'll shoot it ahead for the Wildcats. Clark is out there with Eddie Moore. Lockenmeyer, the other member of that trio. Lockenmeyer tries to knock his man off the puck. Instead, Lockenmeyer hits the ice. And Gly with a relatively easy save for the Egan Wildcats. Seen Gabe Bly. He's had a lot of experience between the pipes for the Wildcats. He's he's been he's been you know involved with the varsity team. As you look here, let's, let's you know, see Lockenmeyer leaning on Corkish. Leaning on, on 14. 
14. That's Tronus. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Speaking of Clark, he comes all the way down. Will he get there in time? Nope. And 22 to go opening period. 1-0 Park. They scored in the opening minute. Those of you that are just tuning in here on ETV. Of course, we are your home for Wildcat Sports, and hopefully you're enjoying this game wherever you are across the world wide web. I understand we have some international viewers tonight. We'll have to mention that a little bit later. There's going to be an upcoming penalty on the Wildcats. Interference will be the call. We will call that questionable. But the bottom line, man in the stripe said, you're going to sit for two, young man. Well, it, it, I, to be honest with you, you know, I think that was one where you could have blown a whistle. You didn't have to blow a whistle. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's shoulder to shoulder. Yeah. yeah I, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's shoulder to shoulder. That's a, that's a questionable one. I mean, it's hockey players should be able to bump shoulders like that without, you know, it's not like getting from behind or something. Um, and I don't know. Sorry, that's that one doesn't apply for me. Bottom line, second power play of the evening for Park. Get the puck around really well, first time with a man advantage. Couldn't light the lamp, however. Jensen, two minutes for interference. Interference is the official call. Well, and here's the thing. There have been two interference calls now against the Wildcats. The Wildcats need to adjust to that, Mike. They need to adjust and understand, hey, we're not, you know, we can't do something that's going to get us, you know, another call if, if in fact, the referees are, are going to be on top of that. Cottage Grove keeping the pressure on right now, and they get one. There's a Kaplan that I think might have put that one home. Let's see who that was. It came around the left side, set it in front, but 27 seconds into the power play, two nothing. Cottage Grove. Max Kaplan, the junior forward. Yeah, I think Glides on the on one far side. He comes back, and Kaplan slides it in. Yep. I don't know if it, it might have hit Kerr's stick or might have hit something uh, on the way in, and deflected. Looked like it maybe snuck through the five hole on Glide. Just an. It's an ugly, it's an, it kind of a dirty, what another dirty goal. Well, 2-0 well, Park, midway through this opening period. We'll get the official word, hopefully, here. Number seven, Max Kaplan. Assist to number 10, Jackson Rude, and number 18, Owen Korkish. Rude and Korkish get the assist on that goal. The official word from Nick Johnson, our public address announcer here at the arena. Well, Cats in an early two-goal hole. Let's see if the boys in white can get some pressure on her. Seems weird to say with under eight minutes to go in the opening period, but that next goal is huge. It's going to be. I mean, there's to be fair, there is a lot of there's a lot of hockey to be played, right. and and the Wildcats, you know, this is but, the, but for the Wildcats, this is a big test of their mental toughness and their resilience. You know, you've 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 seeded now an early lead. For the, for the Wolf Pack, and how can you respond? When you talk to the Egan staff and to a man, they've said, this is the team, they get down one goal, two goals. They're not going to hang their head. They've, just, they've shown that resiliency that you just mentioned, Nathan. Not been a problem this year. And more Here. being a pest on the far side. Nicely yeah, done by Eddie Moore. The only way Eddie Moore knows how to play, I think, is to just be a grinder like that. He's got the puck there. He gets checked off the puck. Cole Taligen for Park. Dump back in. Park going to be tagging up, and they do. Trying to get out of his own zone that time for the Wildcats as the puck pops up nearly hits the ceiling. It does hit the ceiling. The break pouty, number seven, the junior. First year on the varsity squad. Prouty and Clark, their situation where it's like, okay, I'm, that's one of those early season things, and you actually, we can actually see off camera. Maybe you can see it to the right. Clark and Prouty talking about, hey, next time let's just do that a little bit differently, so so we can work together on that. That's that's good communication for these two players. Park controls the draw, briefly. More in front of his own bench. He overskates the puck, but is able to poke it out inside the blue line, and Park will tag. Doesn't matter because AJ Clark with an opportunity for the Cats. Clark loses an edge, skating into the zone. No call. No. Clark tried the long outlet that time, but Schwartz couldn't connect. No, I didn't think Clark got taken down. I think he, I agree with you. I think he lost an edge, but given how we've seen calls tonight, Clark just misses going to that far side. 
Back in hustling is Corkish, number 18. Got to say, Mike, I like Clark to score here. I mean, he's he's getting some good hard shots on goal, and one of them's at the goalie, one of them's at the keeper, one of them's just wide. Maybe the next one's in the back of the net. Who knows? And I mean, he's been hustling. I really like that. Well, I think the difference sometimes between you know successful hockey and oh, speaking Here's of successful hockey, two on one opportunity. Robbins, Kerr. It was in Cats the crease. Can't quite get that one home. So you're just saying about opportunity. The opportunities, you know, the difference between playing okay and playing really well is how quickly how you can make take advantage of the other opportunities and how quickly you can make decisions. What I like about Clark is he's being very he was very decisive when he would get up the ice. A little too far for Robbins. I believe the puck was tipped. Yes, it was, the officials say. So we shall play on. Robbins tried to go short side. Kerr was there for a rebound. That shot has traffic on the way through off the stick of Owen Wood. Wood 27 and White back on defense right now. He and Isaac Martin are the pairing. That one went just wide. I'm not sure the goaltender ever saw that one. Miller. This whole sequence has been set up by Robbins. Hustle. He had no business winning that puck. Wood, that one kind of pinballed its way through, but didn't quite make it all the way. And Martin couldn't quite hold that one in. Cat's going to make a change up front. I just saw Kerr went off. Robbins is heading off. As the puck back into the Egan zone. Coming back to get it is O'Leary, number nine in white. Stop, spins right in front of the student section. O'Leary able to poke it out. And odds were definitely not in favor there. One white, three green jerseys. And you saw what happened. Yeah, well, so again, early in the season, Isaac Martin, they're struggling a little bit. He's he's 1v2, and he's like, oh, boy, what am I going to do and get this thing out? Is I think we're going to have an ice here yep. against the Wolfpack. But, you know, again, early season, this is the this is the fourth game for the Wildcats. You know, first, second game for the for the for the Wolfpack. So yep. we're going to see some of that this year. What I think that inures to, if I can use that word, it inures to the benefit of the Wolfpack with their with their strong line that played together last year. They know they already know where they're going to be on the ice. They already know how to work together. It's these Wildcats who are still figuring that out a little bit. But you know, talking to Coach Todd Carlson, he feels like this group of seniors in particular does a really nice job of playing together and playing on selfish. Absolutely. Shot through, that goes off Miller's right pad. Big rebound, here comes Park. They got a two on one if they hurry. Corkish down the slot, couldn't quite connect. He was shadowed that time by 17 for the Egan Wildcats. Charlie Forrester, first time we've called Charlie tonight. Here comes Park the other way. Corkish, there's a name we've called a lot tonight. And justifiably so if you're a Park fan. A little too far for A.J. Clark. Was it tipped? No, it was not. And faceoff will come back to the right of Gabe Gly between the pipes for the Wildcats with 3.38 to go in the first. One of the things the Wildcats have shown us, Mike, is they have shown us the ability to, they have shown us the ability to exit the zone quickly with a, with a stretch, like a stretch pass. You know, Clark has been the recipient of a couple of those passes and to go from defense to offense very quickly, it's going to be the key as they make the comeback here tonight. A little too far for Robbins. Park able to dump that one back in. Good aggressive four check that time by the Wolfpack. But Martin able to poke that one out to center. Briley for the Wildcats 24. Briley KP. Help me out with Briley's last name. Coink Prong, is that right? I believe so. Okay. Briley, I apologize to you and your fan club. We're, we're going to get this one before this year's too deep into the season. Face off just to the right of Aiden Miller. We said the junior between the pipes for Park tonight. Park, by the way, they won. They beat Forest Lake 6-3 the other night for their, their lone game before this one. Tipped in. Gly just kind of kicks that one out near the bench. Cats, possible numbers this time. Robbins leaves it. Kerr, Robbins shot. And a nice save that time by Miller. All the way down. Will it be an ice? The arm is in the air. And indeed it will be with 2.47 to go. Opening period here on ETV. What's an example right there of between Kerr and, and, and Robbins, an example of that unselfish play we were talking about, Mike. I think, you know, watch him. 
Robbins dishes to Kerr. Kerr sets up, squares up, tries to get the defender to commit, sends it back to Robbins. Robbins still didn't have a great angle, but he put it off the keeper's pads, and if somebody's looking at lurking on the back door, maybe they get a rebound. We said Robbins had that overtime winner the other night. He and Lockenmeyer tied for the team leader with a couple of goals this early in the season. Other goal scorer, A.J. Clark's got one, Lance Murray's got one, and uh, Briley Conk Prong's got one as well for the Wildcats. Averaging just like 2.3 goals per game, however. That was a nice block that time by Eddie Moore for the Wildcats. Oh, it might sting a little bit too. He was kind of turned a little sideways on that one. And Parks keeping the pressure in the Wildcats zone. Centered in front, Murray there to defend for the Wildcats. As Rude, over 10 in green. Luxor curricula there down in the corner. We shall play on. Trying to get a long outlet pass. AJ Clark, can he get there before he crosses the line? No, he doesn't, but it didn't matter. Icing was waved off. I believe that was Murray with that long outlet head was across the line. You keep throwing it up to Clark. Eventually, he's going to cash one in, Mike. We've seen him do that, what, four times now in this period? At least. Coach has said he, he is what they would call the speedster on that line. Well, we've see, cer certainly seen flashes of that Absolutely. so far tonight. If I was the Wolfpack, I'd be saying, hey, let's make sure 22 isn't getting breaks. Exactly. Let's, let's, tie, let's make sure we're staying nice and close. Glide, nice job kicking that one aside as the puck maybe came through a little bit of a screen. Nice block again that time. Jensen. And he and Dahlstrom a little pushing and shoving there after the fact. Minute to go. One minute remaining in the first period, one minute. Well, Park obviously, you know, not only on the scoreboard, but honestly, they've been the better team in this yeah. in this period, no question about that. Wildcats, though, have played better as the period has worn on. And if they can stay out of the penalty box yeah. and keep another one off the off the go off the scoreboard here in the last 40 seconds, they might they might have some momentum going into the into the locker room. And Nick Bailey had a really good opportunity there, and there's an opportunity. That was Kaplan knocked down nicely by the Wildcat D. Maybe time for another rush for Park to get, trying to get something set up. Nick Bailey over far side. This is Kaplan who's written out of the play nicely by Murray. So the seconds continue to tick down. We're on to 16 in the period. Opportunity there. It's going to be a hook. Robbins is going to draw the penalty. Adam Freeman's going to sit for Park Cottage Grove. It might be wait till the end of the period to get the penalty, however. The Cats are going to bring it up. Park didn't touch it. Oh, shot high up into the netting, and the Wildcats are going to start that second period with a two-minute power play. Yeah, not a bad way to start. I, I thought that was actually a smart play by the Wildcats. I mean, who needs a 15-second power play, right? I mean, it's just, you know, it's not, it may or may not be super helpful, but a full two minutes to start the second period might be just what you need to get some momentum. Shots in that opening period. Park of Cottage Grove, 10. The Oregon Wildcats, 6. So the Wildcats head off to the locker room. Down by a 2 0 count. As we look at the replay, that's Kaplan's goal. That made it 2 0 for the Wolfpack, which is where we are with 17 minutes in the books. We're going to take ourselves a break as they resurface, and we'll be back shortly with second period action. You're watching ETV, your home for Wildcat Sports. Fostering a pet for a friend or neighbor can keep families together. Learn more at petsandpeopletogether.org. Let's go, for dinner. Donating pet food can keep families together. Pets and people belong together. Learn more at petsandpeopletogether.org. How you holding up? Nothing wrong with getting help. If I promise to look into it, Will you drop it and help me build this fence? <laughs> now you need my help. If you or a veteran you know needs support, don't wait. Reach out. Find resources at va.gov reach. A small area plan offers us a formal method to look at a particular area in detail. We're looking at not just the here and now, but we're looking at the past and the future, 20 or 40 years in the future. 
In this case, it's the area around Egan Central Park. So the Unisys building, the former Delta building, and the former Argosy University building. Together, that comprises about 79 acres and over 731,000 square feet of office space. Because of the current state of the office market, we have high office vacancies in the Twin Cities and really across the nation. So likely what will happen here is that the site will be redeveloped for different uses. The goals in creating the plan are to collect data, public input, and city council direction, and use those to communicate the city's vision to potential site purchasers and developers. We've completed the first phase of public engagement. It included print and social media outreach, a digital survey, and two events at the Egan Community Center. It even included an event with 132 fourth and fifth graders at Pilot Knob STEM Elementary School. This was such a fun event and the first time we've done outreach at an elementary school for a planning project. We are beginning our second phase of community engagement. It will include an interactive survey that summarizes everything the planning team has learned, shares the concepts presented to the city council, and collects community feedback. The planning team will be at Market Fest on July 19th and August 16th to answer questions and collect input. Over 500 people responded to the first digital survey. Feedback from in-person events seemed that people were excited to the concepts and looking forward to participating in the second phase of public engagement. The concept plans are a visual representation of what we've learned about the site, the market, and community needs. The concept plans are not intended to be a choice between three distinct options, but an a la carte menu of possibilities. The concept plans are a visual tool to help us communicate site opportunities to the community. The final plan will most likely have elements of two or more concepts. Join us in shaping the future of the area around Egan Central Park. Visit the city's website for more information. I'll see y'all. I got some batteries and two flashlights. What's up, champ? Flashlight is cool. I feel like you get taller every time I see you. Congratulations, Brandon. Every day, thousands of kids start vaping. And I can't let this happen to my kid. Of course, it's awkward to talk to your kids about the dangers of vaping. Hey, bestie. How sketch is vape? It's hard to get their attention. Ready? Go. Yes. Look at that. Yeah, you, you, you didn't turn yours over. So if you want to talk to your kids about the dangers of vaping, you got to get it trending. No, you're doing it wrong. Let's go. <laughs> Can we talk? Yeah, what's up? <laughs> Visit talkaboutvaping.org for tips on when and how to have the vape talk. How do you know when you've made the right decision? It's the feeling you get in your gut. The one that tells you what's right or wrong. It's the voice inside you that says, I'm buzzed. Better leave the car when it's time to go. Buzz driving is drunk driving.
Today we're doing the annual Cats vs. Cops, where we play a seven on seven game against the uh, cops here in Egan. This was actually an idea a couple years ago of our police chief, Roger New. He said we should play a touch football game, and him and our former president, Jack Esser, made this happen. Myself and another community member, uh, Jack Esser, were thinking of ways to try to bring the community together, and he said, would you be interested in playing flag football uh, against a high school team before the season kicked off? And I said, yeah, why not? And three years later, here we are. It's an opportunity for us to get back to the community, get a chance to connect with our local police officers and the way they've been able to do stuff in the community for us. It's a chance for us to have some fun out there and play what we do on Friday nights with them. One of the most important parts about this event is just trying to bring the community together. We never knew that it was going to grow to this extent, but uh, we're glad that we could just be part of this event and uh, we just appreciate the community support. Our police force is awesome. And for us to be able to do this with them, I think is, is just, it shows that they're looking for ways to be out in the community. So we come together and we play seven on seven and we have a blast out there. I love anything we can do to build that relationship. They do so much for us. So it's a great way to give back to them. And you know, it's a night for them to take off doing their duties as police officers and enjoy being a high schooler like we are and having some fun playing some football. We're the Egan Wildcats, but like, we're all Egan. We're all one team. It's a great event and it's a lot of fun. Hi, I'm Ryan Blaney, a third generation race car driver. And we dedicate a lot of our time to going as fast as possible. But when my grandpa was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it was a very unexpected bump in the road for us. It's important to notice if older family members are acting differently, experiencing problems with their memory, or having trouble with routine tasks. Early detection of Alzheimer's can give your family time to explore support services, make a plan for the future, and access available treatments. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. You've done the hard part. You quit smoking. Now do the easy part and get scanned for lung cancer. If you smoked, you may still be at risk, but early detection could save your life. Talk to your doctor and learn more at savedbythescan.org. You know you don't have to wear your PT gear anymore, right? It's comfortable. So how's civilian life treating you? It's fine. When I got out, I didn't want to admit that there was anything wrong because I felt like a failure. And then I realized, like, there's nothing to be ashamed of. So I started talking to someone. Maybe you are fine, but if you're not, it's okay. Thank you. If you or a veteran you know needs support, don't wait. Reach out. Find resources at va.gov slash reach. Donating pet food can keep families together. Pets and people belong together. Learn more at petsandpeopletogether.org. How you holding up? Nothing wrong with getting help. If I promise to look into it, will you drop it and help me build this fence? <laughs> now you need my help. If you or a veteran you know needs support, don't wait. Reach out. Find resources at va.gov reach. Fostering a pet for a friend or neighbor can keep families together. Learn more at petsandpeopletogether.org. Donating pet food can keep families together. Pets and people belong together. Learn more at petsandpeopletogether.org. Fostering a pet for a friend or neighbor can keep families together. Learn more at petsandpeopletogether.org. How do you know when you've made the right decision? It's the feeling you get in your gut. The one that tells you what's right or wrong. It's the voice inside you that says, I'm buzzed. Better leave the car when it's time to go. Buzz driving is dr It's something about having that piece of paper. Some people think that's worth more than my skills. I've run this place for 20 years, but I still need to prove that I'm more than what you see on paper. You just gotta be so good they can't ignore you. It's the way my mind works. I have a very mechanical brain. Analytics and empathy. That's how I gain clients. I am more. I'm more than who I am on paper.
How you holding up? Nothing wrong with getting help. If I promised to look into it, will you drop it and help me build this fence? <laughs> now you need my help. If you or a veteran you know needs support, don't wait. Reach out. Find resources at va.gov reach. How do you know when you've made the right decision? It's the feeling you get in your gut. The one that tells you what's right or wrong. It's the voice inside you that says, I'm buzzed. Better leave the car when it's time to go. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Every day, thousands of kids start vaping. And I can't let this happen to my kid. Of course, it's awkward to talk to your kids about the dangers of vaping. Hey, bestie. How sketch is me? It's hard to get their attention. Ready? Go. Yes. Look at that. Yeah, you, you didn't even turn yours over. So if you want to talk to your kids about the dangers of vaping, you got to get it trending. No, you're doing it wrong. Let's go. <laughs> Can we talk? Yeah, what's up? <laughs> Visit talkaboutvaping.org for tips on when and how to have the vape talk. Welcome you back inside the Eagan Civic Arena as we get set for second period action. You see the Eagan Wildcats head to the ice. They are down by a 2-0 count as we start the middle frame. However, they will have a two-minute power play to start this period as Park was whistled just as the buzzer sounded to end the first period. Again, he's Nathan Crown. I'm Mike Cook. Glad you're with us for the home opener for the Wildcats. We got Park of Cottage Grove here. And uh, like we said earlier, this could be a section battering game, although we're here December 1st and sections aren't until close to Valentine's Day. But Gabe Glide and the Wildcats, they need to get something going here. They were outshot 10-6. Cats gave up that early goal to Park. Park got another one there on the power play about five minutes in, and here we are. Yeah, the Wildcats have definitely got to stay off the penalty kill. They've got to let, you know, the Park is just so far has demonstrated wonderful offensive technical skill they the wildcats can't keep giving them chances they've got to do more to make sure they stay out of that penalty box regardless of whether or not you think the calls are a little bit on the edge in any event the wildcats find themselves now with a power play opportunity even if i'll say it to, right now mike even if they don't score if the wildcats can run a good power play create good offensive scoring chances they will get some momentum coming out of this period absolutely hey real quick we got an opportunity i want to make sure we give a shout out to a couple special ladies that are checking in tonight Mata Carlson, of course, she's checking in from Soccer Rapids. Coach Todd Carlson's mom. And then Jeff Corkus, Grandma Shirley, is watching us from Canada this evening. So, Grandma Shirley, glad you're tuned in to watch your Park of Cottage Grove Wolfpack. I'm sure you're happy they're up by a 2 0 count. That's for Mata Carlson. Well, hey, we, there's still time for the home team. Cats dumping in this time. That's Lockenmeyer, 19 and white. Taken away by 18 and Green Cork. Nice intercept that time by number seven of Greg Proudy. Otherwise, Park was looking to spring a guy in all alone while shorthanded. All the way down because they're on the PK. That's okay. Wildcats struggling a little bit to kind of enter the zone with the puck in control. Let's see what they've got now. Is that Lockenmeyer was aspirational there, looking for more, and I think that's going to be an icing call against the it Wildcats is. again. Again, early in the season, I get it, but at the same time, they've got to. They, you know, it's it's like in so, it's like we talk about in soccer all the time. You only get so many chances. You you may go a whole game and only give two or three opportunities to really score a goal. You have to do. You have to take advantage of those opportunities as the Wildcats have an opportunity right now. And one thing for the Wildcats. The, they're doing a little bit of a different power play this year. They're not so much the one three one diamond that a lot of teams use. It's more they keep two guys up high, three guys down low. And the coaches have said the timing has been an issue so far as they get used to that adjustment, uh, among other things. So Wildcats, 0 of 7 on the power play coming into this one. Six of those chances came in that season opener against Woodbury. And deep is Martin. Martin will get it back. He's got near side. Here's Kerr. He'll shoot from there. Long shot. Oh, that almost, I don't know how that didn't go in. I think it went off the pad of the goaltender somehow and bounced out. Let's see if we have a replay on that one. But when the goalie's looking like that, you got, you're thinking that puck had to go in. Well, Miller has, Miller's been good so far. 
Mike, but he's also given up a handful of rebounds, and if the Wildcats are able to pounce on rebounds, they might have a chance against to put one past Miller. No, he got hit in the head, that shot by uh, Briley. You take a look at the shot by Kerr. Yeah, he's moving to his left. That puck kind of stayed to the right, and wow. I think it went off his left arm and then kind of came back across the front of his body. Oh, Robbins was right there. It's unlucky for Robbins that he didn't just get an extra instant or a step closer. He would have poked that home. 13 ticks to go on the man advantage for the Wildcats. Eddie Moore loses the draw. Probably able to keep it in, however, for the Wildcats. Far side shot, that goes wide of the cage. And Park will have killed off this penalty as the puck goes all the way back down. Good aggressive forecheck that time by Rude for Cottage Grove. And Wildcats gonna get something out. Nope, Eddie Moore's gonna be forced to regroup in his own zone. He'll lose the puck in the process. Cottage Grove tried to stick handle. Nice job that time by Lance Murray. Murray, a junior captain for this, or senior captain, pardon me, for this Wildcat squad. Not sure what there was talk behind the play. It was like Bly was, oh, the net was off. Yeah, the net was off. The referee blew his whistle, but nobody heard it. And as a result, the, the, both teams kept playing. Referee finally got it back, but at this point, we had had some chaos. And so he says, okay, stop it. We're going to bring it all the way down. And it was knocked off by a park player. I couldn't pick up the number sliding into it, so I guess they're going to bring the face off all the way down to the park end. But in any event, good to see the stripes on top of that issue. Face off to the left of Miller. In front of the student section, centered across, nobody there wearing white. Here comes Park Cottage Grove the other way. Tal is leading the rush. And that was broken up nicely by the Wildcats. Kerr, can he get around his man? No. Cottage Grove will try to dump it in that time off the stick of Malachi McMorrow. Into the Wildcats zone goes Park. And they are gonna actually going to be able to keep that one in. Fanning at the blue line. And here come the Wildcats. They all tried to get out. Nice job coming back on that. It was sand for Park Cottage Grove to lift a stick of a Wildcat. And Hudson Kerr broke his stick, so that's another $300 to the Bauer Retirement Fund. <laughs> Park turns, they get three on three coming into the zone. Wood back for the Wildcats. He takes his man out hard behind the boards. They go in Wood. Wood listed at just 5'10", 170. Looks bigger than that. Park two on one potential. Tried to find a trailer, nobody there wearing green as Park was making a bit of a change. Deep into the zone it goes. And we play on. Miller thought about trying to grab that puck. And now he'll be able to off the shot coming from that left side. I think it was Jensen with the attempt. It was. It was. It's interesting. It, it, you mentioned it already, Mike Cook, but to see Peyton Jensen, who had played his play defense for this team for the, the, the year he was on varsity and even before as a JV player, now being moved to a forward position, that's it's kind of an interesting change for him. And, you know, be interesting to see how he uses what, what we've seen in the past, that real physical play. Interesting to see how that translates to a forward position. Yeah, he's six foot 180, they list him at. Uh, he plays more like he's 220. Check that, 190. Yeah, there you go. Eight, nine, looks the same. Cats trying to get on the board. Down by two. We're just over five minutes into this, or four and a half minutes, I should say, into this second period. It just made the Cats a little more aggressive in the on the forecheck this period. Jensen might have got away with one there. Student yeah. section for Park got his girl definitely wanted to call. Yeah, I think that's what you call rubbing his race in, Mike. It's it, it he definitely gave him a little body contact, but he didn't knock him necessarily knock him down. Murray, nice job of working the blue line to not have a teammate offside. Sends it out front. A puck I thought did get out, and oh. indeed it did. Wood was just a split second too late. Cats forced to tag up. Here comes Cottage Grove with the puck. Dahlstrom cuts to the middle. Dahlstrom shot. Just whistling high and wide. He had Gly leading the other way. Long shot. That hit traffic. Eddie Moore able to punch it out briefly. 
Farley, Clint Cronk for the Cats. Couldn't get anything going. Woodle shoot it in deep for the Wildcats as they changed up their front three. Here's Kerr in deep for the Cats. Robbins over there far side. Martin keeps it in. Robbins tried to find Kerr coming down the slot. Couldn't quite connect. Nice job of Cottage Grove to get that puck out. Cats forced to regroup. 11.15 to go here. Second period. Still 2-0 Cottage Grove. Park of Cottage Grove, I should say. Oh, and we've got a. Not sure what the whistle was for. Not sure if it was played by a played with a high stick, perhaps. Not sure. In any event, there is going to be a face-off here just to the right of Miller. Missed the signal. I didn't, I don't know, I'm sure the referees gave us a signal, but no. in any event, we've got a face-off in the park zone. Park yet to have a shot on goal this period. The Cats have three. Tried to get it out in front to number 18 in White Jensen. And a little too far that time. Should be an icing, and indeed it is a whistle, which gives us a great opportunity. Hey, let's mention the crew that's with us tonight because to have this broadcast, you guys have no idea what it took to get this broadcast on tonight. It was it's bordering it was bordering on an act of Congress. Uh, our award-winning ETV crew tonight: uh, Tim Shinyan, Greg Borman, Dalton Gruber, Max Hellmuller, and Willie Nielsen, along with you and me, Mike, and of course Josh Sibley, our executive producer. So, thank you so much to our award-winning ETV crew for the sights and sounds here from Egan Civic Arena. You guys do all the hard work, so Mike and I can have fun up here in the booth. You know, for people that are of a certain age, you would understand this comment, but to get this broadcast on, they had to MacGyver things for this to work. So kudos to the uh, ETV crew for that. Glad you could be with us here on a Friday night from the Civic Arena. Park Cottage Grove 2, Egan nothing. And Miller will hang on briefly for Park of Cottage Grove. It has been a spirited second period here, Mike Cook. There have been shots and there have been scoring opportunities on both ends. Wildcats, maybe if, if you if you were grading it, Wildcats might be playing a little bit better right now than the Park Wolfpack. So Park says, hey, these guys had a power play to start the period. They're playing well now. Now we've got to do something to, to steal some of that momentum back. No, I, I don't think it's a question that Egan's had the better of this period. It has 10-15 remaining in it. However, they've been able to keep the Wildcats off the scoreboard. And here comes Park all the way across up into the netting and we'll get a whistle in the Wildcat zone to the left of Gabe Gly. Should go one of the park captains number 18 Owen Corkish. He had a goal in these teams met last year. That was a seven to four park win over in South Washington County. Uh, Root had a hat trick in that one and Gavin Moss had two goals to assist. Actually, I should say Root had a hat trick and three assists in that one. Thought we might get a nice there, not going to happen. Opportunity aggressive four check that time by Park. And they'll just drop it back, set things up. They've got their five guys on that they want right now. Schwartz tried to head man it. Moore was there for the cast, and Isaac Martin's going to bring it out, crossing the logo. Here's that A.J. Clark right through the wickets that time of Schwartz. But it's the team in green coming the other way, not the team with the green trim. That shot goes way wide up into the netting with 9.17 to go here in the second. Hey, quick shout out, Egan girls basketball. They're 1-0 on this young season. Beat Laconia 71-54 the other night. Drew Busley, 21 points. Nearly had a triple-double in that one. Uh, Jocelyn McCleary had 16. Maya Meisinger, 13 for the girls' hoops team. They are home on the 5th against Jefferson. I believe it's St. Michael Albertville on the 8th. Boys basketball season opener, December 7th. White Bear Lake will be at the Egan Gym. And, of course, those girls are the defending section champions, having right. taken a trip to, to the Williams, Arena last, Williams Arena last year. That's right. Speaking of St. Michael, I remember right, it was St. Michael that knocked them out in the quarters. And it's 3 up in Park Cottage Grove. And they celebrate in front of the student section. Well, if you're going to celebrate, that's the place to do it. 
big big goal there for the Cottage Grove Wolfpack. Looks like it's going to be Cole Talich. He's the first man to the bench anyway. Here's a look at the replay. It's a shot. It is a rebound Going and a, rebound. a goal. Yep. So it's a it's a rebound. Glide just gave up that rebound. None of his defenders could get to it that time. I'm unlucky there for Gly. Now we'll see if they give any assists on it. Bottom line, it is 3 0. Park. Gavin Sand, the lone assist for the Wolfpack. Cats down by a field goal midway through this one. Uh, now the now the Wildcats really have got to dig deep. They just there is there's plenty of hockey to play. Yep. You still have half the game to play. You can score goals in bunches. It's possible for any hockey team to do that, but they've got to start making it count. There's Isaac Martin leading the rush. Martin with a shot. I'm not sure how Miller got a piece of that. He was ducking down. I'm not sure if that clipped his shoulder. I, shoulder or helmet. But yeah, nice job by Martin. Just a great head of steam through neutral. That hustle there by 12. Yeah, I think, yeah, it, yeah. I think it went off the shoulder yeah. and helmet, yeah, it was maybe. Kind of right there. Wow, great camera work by our ETV crew. No question about that. And big kudos to Martin for out hustling a couple of a couple of uh, Wolfpack players. Yeah, Martin comes in. He's got one goal in 28 career games. Cottage Grove looking to spring a man deep. It was Moss that kind of trickled in behind the Egan D. But nothing happened uh, for the Cottage Grove Wolfpack that time down. Quick shot. Miller quicker glove. 740 to go. Shots now 12 apiece. But more importantly, the Wolfpack have three where the Wildcats have zero. As you look at number three zero. 12 well, saves. Oh, Miller Miller so far pitching a perfect pitching shutout here. No question big for the Wolfpack. The big issue though is that the Wolfpack have cashed in on the rebounds, right? They've cashed in on the rebounds that Gly has, has given them a couple of times. Um, where there's been a loose puck or something, and, and, and the Wildcats have not cashed in when there's been an opportunity that, that's been given away by Miller. And so that's that's what that's what's going to have to change here for these Wildcats if they're going to climb back into this game. That is climb, I, I said, I mean claw by their way back into the game. Nice, nice. Kept in that time, far side for the Cats. And that one not able to, yeah, that did come out, I thought. An opportunity, Cottage Grove, can they get out? Nope. Nice hustle back that time by number seven in white, Blake Crowdy, the junior. In the and I don't think Parks is the kind of team that's just going to sit back right now. No, absolutely not. There's no reason to. I mean, the Wildcats are playing. This isn't a situation where the Wildcats are not able to get out of their own end. Literally, they're just getting just it's one way traffic. This is a competitive hockey game where the Wolfpack are, are going to keep trying to score some goals. They want to really put this thing away because, you know, just like the, what, the Wolfpack have managed to score three goals in, in the first half of the game, the Wildcats can do the same on the back end. See a good crowd there. Some well, the young Park of Cottage Grove kids behind the glass. Probably JV players and uh, you can JV with a one nothing win before this hockey game. So congratulations to the Wildcat JV squad. Did not see who got the goal for Egan. And that was Marcus Boniface with a shutout. Clark in deep for the Cats. And wow. Uh, oh, yeah, they, yeah they, I, they did get him. Yeah, I think you had to call that one. That was. Yeah, that was pretty obvious. I, I, look, okay, so this is, this, this is, it was obvious. It was, I get it. You know, Corkish is upset because he got nailed into the boards. It was, you know, I, you know, I thought it was, it was, it was borderline. It was yeah, close. Yeah, it was I, close. I will agree. So Corkish is upset, and he goes and takes it out on, is that uh, Moore? It's Clark. 14, it? Clark. No, it's, it looks like it's 14. It looks 14. like Eddie Moore. So he goes in and, and hits hits Moore up high. Opportunity here for the Wildcats to, to cash in. Coach Corkish yeah. for the uh, Wolfpack talking to the referee saying, hey, uh, I think you might have, before the elbow, I think you might have missed a, either a cross check or a, or a boarding call or something like that. But in any event, Wildcats certainly have not slacked off on their physical play, Mike. Interesting, you saw that shot of Corker sitting in the box. You saw a youngster there, the 
Pink hat and a Wildcat sweatshirt on. EHA night. A lot of Egan hockey kids here tonight wearing their jerseys. Got in free. Of course, I understand if, what if they wear their jerseys to pretty much any home game they're going to get in. So good to see the Egan Hockey Association youth in attendance. Okay, well, Murray just got absolutely tackled there. The Wildcats are the, excuse me, the park. Cottage Grove have got to be really careful here. They're already on a penalty kill. And Murray just absolutely got taken down. Lockenmeyer, Murray, Prouty. Prouty battles right at the blue line. Coming away with the puck, though, it was more. He had to backtrack to get out. Martin a little shove for his efforts. Park will just pound that out all the way down. Nice play, Jackson Ruth. Smart play by the junior. 108 to go, man advantage for the Wildcats. Well, I, will, I will say this for for Park. What we've seen so far tonight, there have not been very many. What I would call, and I, I get you know dumb, you know dumb plays, bad decisions. They've made a lot of good decisions, a lot of good plays, smart plays. Whether it's not taking it off sides, whether it's you know setting their teammates up. Good play by the Park, Park Cottage Grove Wolfpack. Cats see if they can get something set up this time in the Park of Cottage Grove zone. This will be Murray. Shoots through traffic high, high off the glass. Not sure. That was deflected on the way through. Miller might have got a tip of the glove on it, too. But bottom line, the Wolfpack clear the zone. Cats got to regroup. They got 29 seconds to work with. Murray leaves it for, it's going to turn out to be Kerr. Puck was kind of dangerously sitting there momentarily. Kerr goes in one on about three. And we're going to have a penalty, I believe, up on the Wildcats. Yeah, I think they're going to get Kerr for a hook. Yep, that is the call. Going to get Kerr for a hook. I, I, You could see the players coming together. And if what happened, if what I think happened happened, that's a good call. Kerr did get tangled up and, and hauled, a, hauled a park player down. Unfortunately, it kills the last 15 seconds of the power play and also creates an opportunity for the Wolfpack to go on the power play shortly here. The Wildcats cannot afford to go four goals down to these Wolfpack. They will they will have an incredible task climbing out of that hole. Absolutely. Four on four for about another nine seconds. Corkish is standing up. He's ready to come out of that box, which is going to be right now, just as Park starts to bring it down into the Wildcats zone. Schwartz in deep. Prouty for the Cats. Prouty gets the better of that one. Kept in that time, Moss. Far side for Rip Park. Second of the night. Max Kaplan. Well, they've been working on that. In the first period, we saw that several times. They would bring the puck to one side and try to go all the way across the ice, setting up what, what you might call the backdoor pass, the backdoor shot, if you want to call it that. But nicely done by Park. They set it, no question. Well, that all started with that puck being held in back at the point. That was Rude that really did a nice job of keeping it in. Fly, not much of a chance there. Nice, just a gorgeous one-timer. Cap on a junior forward for the Wolfpack. Scoring for the Wolfpack on the power play, number seven, Max Kaplan. Assist to number 10, Jackson Rude. And number 18, Owen Corkish. Rude and Corkish getting the assist. That's a Rude and Corkish both with three point nights. Already, we still have a period and a quarter to play. <laughs> Park two of three on the power play tonight. Well, I'll tell you right now, if the Cottage Grove Wolfpack, if Park Wolfpack keeps playing like this, they will not have to worry about getting a not getting a home <laughs> game in, in the section. Absolutely. They are they're looking every part the team that you might have expected. Now I will say this. I'm sure, you know, I'm sure Coach Corkish would agree. You want production from all parts of your lineup, and you've got a big line, a big production line that's obviously playing very well, but at the same time, maybe the focus is going to be on, hey, we got to get other people working too, because eventually somebody is going to start playing some defense and, and shut those guys down. I want to mention Coach Corkus, Jeff Corkus, the first year coach for Park of Cottage Grove, but shot Miller, and he gobbles that one up. But Corkus was a long time, 17 years girls coach at Hastings High School, girls hockey coach, association hall of famer. 
was able to take the job this year as Jay Moser left the program after 17 years at Parker Cottage Grove. And Corkish just said, you know, it's been a great group to work with. And one of the things, well, he said one, the defense has been a little bit of a challenge for him maybe, but look okay tonight. But he said the other thing about a lot of these kids is they've played together since they were four or five years old. This is what they've talked about. This is what they've wanted. And I think you just see it. Opportunity, rebound, and Gly somehow reaches back to keep this a four-score game. Gly wasn't getting a whole lot of help there. That was, they were just, just absolutely walking in on him. He's got a good, does a good job there. Big credit to Robbins on the back door, tying up number 11. That's McMorrow. McMorrow. But if he doesn't, if Robbins isn't tying up McMorrow, it's five, five rip, and he can start the bus. Let me see that replay again. I thought it might have actually went up. Did it, Robbins actually go off his skate? I'm not sure if it was McMorrow or Robbins. Bottom line is it stayed out. Under three to go, second period. Cottage Grove, two in the first, two here in the second. That makes it four. Well, Golden passes, couldn't get the shot off, snapped the twig. Corkish got to go to the bench. That'll be another few, what did we say, 300 bucks on the stick? 300 bucks to the Bauer Retirement Fund or the CCM <laughs> Retirement Fund, depending on where you are. Absolutely. Back in front. Lockmeyer was hoping to poke that one out and chase it down. Instead, it's going to be an icing on the Wildcats. 2.22 to go. You know, there is a difference here, Mike Hook. There is a feeling of a difference, I, I will admit. For, you know, you and I have been calling these games for a little, little while now, and we've seen Wildcat teams lose games. We've seen them win, win games. But when they're, when they're losing for a rip, it's usually not a game where you say, hey, they, they're playing well. Wildcats aren't playing bad hockey. They're not playing bad hockey. They, they've still got to do some things better. Don't get me wrong. But this is not one-way traffic. That one nearly found the top corner off the stick of Gustacio. And he's going to actually hustle back on defense. Gets there before the Wildcats do. That was Garrett Koken hustling in for the Wildcats. I saw Garrett was a award winner for the JV football squad this year. It was, it was a defensive something I saw. Defense. At the JV Defensive Award, they call it. As you look at number nine, Colin O'Leary for the Wildcats. Some big stuff coming up here. We want to remind you that Egan High School theater production for 23-24 season is presenting Rock of Ages starting in on December 8th, running through December 16th. It's a tale of big, bad 1980s Hollywood, hair bands, all sorts of great music, especially if you're of a certain age. And frankly, I can't wait to get tickets and Check out and see how the kids today play the music from when I was a kid. You know, it's funny, my own kids, they like listening to that 80s music, and that's what a lot of this is going to be. Sticks and Whitesnake and Journey, I think they have listed on the promo, among others. I think I saw Twisted Sister with their big one hit they had back in the day. Come on, they had at least two or three. Okay, okay well, the one was, two. The one was big. The one was big, yes. Okay, and then it was just yes. kind of like, yeah, whatever. Yes. Yeah, there's there's this there's this other there's this other band called Bone Bone Jovi, yeah, Bone Jovi, Bon Giovanni. Or so, yeah, yeah, they did okay. Yeah, they did okay. Living on a prayer, and they had a couple other hits somewhere along the way. 124 to go, by the way, here in this second period is Nathan and I reminisce about our youthful musical taste. Still have a hockey game to play here, Mike Absolutely. Cook. The Wild, Wildcats still have an opportunity to get back in this game and make it interesting. They've got, they've got to produce something on the scoreboard. More in deep for the Cats. Just over a minute to go in this middle frame. Nice, nice head of steam coming out of the zone. That time was Kerr. Robbins tries to poke it at. He's got a little help that time from Quant Prong. We were skating at the time was Kerr all the way down that no icing as Kerr had an opportunity at that one for the Wildcat bench. Murray for the Wildcats loses the puck. The top trio for Cottage Grove back on it. It feels like those guys are out there every other shift. 
Well, I'll be honest with you. I have not been. I haven't been keeping track. But but Mike, I tend to agree with you. I mean, when you have a team, when you excuse me, when you have a line and a group of players that are that hot, working that well together in a game that's competitive, why wouldn't you run them out there as much as you possibly could? In the corner that time, chasing it down for Cottage Grove is 37. They do not have a 37 listed on the roster. We'll have to see if we can find out who that player is. All the way down, should be an icing. 1.4 to go. Well, if you're running the clock, you just kind of let that slide, don't you? Back I think if it's .4, if it's .4, you can get away with it. 1.4, it looks a little more silly. And Cottage Grove is going to pull the goaltender here. Why not? That's, no, that's, I, a, that's I, a great call. I think this is smart. I think this is smart. Put an extra attacker on. It's 1.4 seconds. Even if the Wildcats win this faceoff, I don't think it's physically possible to shoot down all the way to the end no. in 1.4 seconds. See if Root can draw it back to Moss. He can't. Nice job, Eddie Moore. Smart play, just fall on the puck. Well, the Wildcats have got a little bit of work to do, Mike Cook, here just, in this second intermission. Just a little. Shots, by the way, 17-13 now in favor of Park of Cottage Grove. 4 nothing though, where it matters even more is Gabe Gly and the Wildcats are going to head to the locker room. They're going to regroup. Hopefully come out and get something going in the third period as we look at some of those second period highlights. Opportunity there. Here's that goal in that. That was Gly with the big glove yeah. save. Oh, Nicely no, that, done. Well, no, that was the one where they scored. I think it was no, that was one. You're right. Gly reached back. That was that was Gly reaching back. Oh, I mean, yep. we, we've 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 seen some, we've seen some good play from the Wildcats. Again, they haven't played bad hockey. Right? This isn't a situation where they can't get out of their own end. They can't connect two passes to save their lives. They're playing good hockey. But right now, the Wolfpack are absolute are playing better hockey. They're playing better hockey, and they're taking advantage of the opportunities when Gly or the defense gives up a rebound. They're slamming it home, and it's just it's just. You know, it's it's just too a little too easy for the Wolfpack. Yep. Seven shots apiece that period. Four nothing Wolfpack as we take our second break of this one. We'll be coming back in a little bit with third period action. You're watching Wildcat Hockey on ETV. Donating pet food can keep families together. Pets and people belong together. Learn more at petsandpeopletogether.org. How you holding up? Nothing wrong with getting help. If I promise to look into it, will you drop it and help me build this fence? <laughs> now you need my help. If you or a veteran you know needs support, don't wait. Reach out. Find resources at va.gov reach. Fostering a pet for a friend or neighbor can keep families together. Learn more at petsandpeopletogether.org. You know you don't have to wear your PT gear anymore, right? It's comfortable. So how's civilian life treating you? It's fine. When I got out, I didn't want to admit that there was anything wrong because I felt like a failure. And then I realized, like, there's nothing to be ashamed of. So I started talking to someone. Maybe you are fine. But if you're not, it's okay. Thank you. If you or a veteran you know needs support, don't wait. Reach out. Find resources at va.gov reach. so sad. You've got a roof over your head. You gotta stop with that depressing stuff. That's a white people thing. You all right? It just feels like it's coming from everywhere. Do you want to talk about it? You can talk to me if you're feeling sad. Whenever you need to talk, I'm here, okay? Quit smoking. 
Now do the easy part and get scanned for lung cancer. If you smoked, you may still be at risk, but early detection could save your life. Talk to your doctor and learn more at savedbythescan.org. It's something about having that piece of paper. Some people think that's worth more than my skills. I've run this place for 20 years, but I still need to prove that I'm more than what you see on paper. You gotta be so good they can't ignore you. It's the way my mind works. I have a very mechanical brain. Analytics and empathy. That's how I gain clients. I am more. I'm more than who I am on paper. Hi, I'm Ryan Blaney, a third generation race car driver. And we dedicate a lot of our time to going as fast as possible. But when my grandpa was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it was a very unexpected bump in the road for us. It's important to notice if older family members are acting differently, experiencing problems with their memory, or having trouble with routine tasks. Early detection of Alzheimer's can give your family time to explore support services, make a plan for the future, and access available treatments. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. Every day, thousands of kids start vaping. And I can't let this happen to my kid. Of course, it's awkward to talk to your kids about the dangers of vaping. Hey, bestie. How sketch is vaping? It's hard to get their attention. Ready? Go. Yes. Look at that. Yeah, you, you didn't turn yours over. So if you want to talk to your kids about the dangers of vaping, you got to get it trending. <laughs> No, you're doing it wrong. Let's go. <laughs> Can we talk? Yeah, what's up? <laughs> Visit talkaboutvaping.org for tips on when and how to have the vape talk. <laughs> Do you want to go grab some frozen yogurt tonight? Maybe another time. Thanks, though. Hey, Charles, how do you like your burger? Ooh, well done, I hope. <sighs> I love this tree. Hey, honey. We thought we'd try something new. Family art hour. Come on, sit down. Okay, guys, what do you think? That is you. Oh, you got jokes. You're funny. That is you. And that is your son and your other son. Learn about adopting a teen from foster care. You can't imagine the reward. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. I'll see y'all. Today we're doing the annual Cats vs. Cops, where we play a seven-on-seven -seven game against uh, cops here in Egan. This was actually an idea a couple years ago of our police chief, Roger New. He said we should play a touch football game, and him and our former president, Jack Esser, made this happen. Myself and another community member, uh, Jack Esser, were thinking of ways to try to bring the community together, and he said, would you be interested in playing flag football uh, against a high school team before the season kicked off? And I said, yeah, why not? And three years later, here we are. Just an opportunity for us to get back to the community, get a chance to connect with our local police officers and the way they've been able to do stuff in the community for us. It's a chance for us to have some fun out there and play what we do on Friday nights with them. 
One of the most important parts about this event is just trying to bring the community together. We never knew that it was going to grow to this extent, but uh, we're glad that we could just be part of this event, and uh, we just appreciate the community support. Our police force is awesome, and for us to be able to do this with them, I think is, is just, it shows that they're looking for ways to be out in the community. So we come together and we play seven on seven, and we have a blast out there. I love anything we can do to build that relationship. They do so much for us, so it's a great way to give back to them, and you know, it's a night for them to take off doing their duties as police officers and enjoy being a high schooler like we are and having some fun playing some football. We're the Egan Wildcats, but like, we're all Egan. We're all one team. It's a great event and it's a lot of fun. I don't know why you're so sad. You've got a roof over your head. You gotta stop with that depressing stuff. That's a white people thing. You all right? It just feels like it's coming from everywhere. Do you want to talk about it? You can talk to me if you're feeling sad. Whenever you need to talk, I'm here, okay? done the hard part. You quit smoking. Now do the easy part and get scanned for lung cancer. If you smoked, you may still be at risk, but early detection could save your life. Talk to your doctor and learn more at savedbythescan.org. It's something about having that piece of paper. Some people think that's worth more than my skills. I've run this place for 20 years, but I still need to prove that I'm more than what you see on paper. so good they can't ignore you. It's the way my mind works. I have a very mechanical brain. Analytics and empathy. That's how I gain clients. I am more. I'm more than who I am on paper. Hi, I'm Ryan Blaney, a third generation race car driver. And we dedicate a lot of our time to going as fast as possible. But when my grandpa was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it was a very unexpected bump in the road for us. It's important to notice if older family members are acting differently, experiencing problems with their memory, or having trouble with routine tasks. Early detection of Alzheimer's can give your family time to explore support services, make a plan for the future, and access available treatments. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. It's something about having that piece of paper. Some people think that's worth more than my skills. I've run this place for 20 years, but I still need to prove that I'm more than what you see on paper. gotta be so good they can't ignore you. It's the way my mind works. I have a very mechanical brain. Analytics and empathy. That's how I gain clients. I am more. I'm more than who I am on paper. How do you know when you've made the right decision? It's the feeling you get in your gut. The one that tells you what's right or wrong. It's the voice inside you that says, I'm buzzed. Better leave the car when it's time to go. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Thank you so much. Fostering a pet for a friend or neighbor can keep families together. Learn more at petsandpeopletogether.org. Let's go for dinner. Donating pet food can keep families together. Pets and people belong together. Learn more at petsandpeopletogether.org. How you holding up? Nothing wrong with getting help. If I promise to look into it, will you drop it and help me build this fence? <laughs> now you need my help. If you or a veteran you know needs support, don't wait. Reach out. Find resources at va.gov reach. As we get set for third period action here in Wildcat country, Gabe Bly and the Eagle Wildcats down by a 4 0 count. Wildcats over there gathered around head coach Todd Carlson. And the Park Cottage Grill over there gathered over around their bench. Around Jeff Corkish coaching his second game as the head man for the Wolfpack. Nathan Cron is here. I'm Mike Cook. We're glad you're still with us here inside the Eagan Civic Arena Friday night hockey. 4-0, Parker Cottage Grove as we get set for period 
number three. Grayson Robbins brings it in deep for the Wildcats. Before I forget anything, I want to throw this out there. Egan, by the way, their next game, Tuesday the 5th, they're at Eastview. Of course, that game's over at the Apple Valley Sports Arena. And they're home Saturday, December 9th against Prior Lake. 7.30 start scheduled for the boys on that one. That's a girls-boys doubleheader day, which we all know that scheduled time after, after that first one. So, and by the way, if you're a Park of Cottage Grove fan with us, first off, congratulations on your squad tonight. But uh, they're at East Ridge, which is at the Cottage Grove Arena, uh, Thursday the 7th. And then they, they have a week off till they play Stillwater over at... Uh, in Stillwater. Wildcats have a spate of games here before they go down over the holidays for a, a, game, a tournament in Rochester and the Wolfpack will be playing in the Owatonna Heritage Classic over the holidays as well as a tradition here for the Wild, excuse me, not just Wildcats, but all of, a lot of high school hockey teams will play in holiday tournaments around the, around the region. For a lot of years, the Wildcats were that Kaposha Classic down in South St. Paul and Trying to remember, I, Park was in that as well. They very well could have been for a, some point, but well, the, the Egan High School girls team, a varsity team, will be playing the Kaposha Classic um, at that time. But that's a month from now because today is December first. It's a Friday night, fourth game of the year for the boys varsity squad. And can, we can afford they're down four nothing. Here into the third period, puck out of play. Face off should come. Just, I believe it's going to be, you know, they're going to say it's going to be outside the zone. Where's this one going to go? I thought, gonna, I thought it was going to be outside the zone. And I think what they're going to say is that as, I think it was, it was Moss who's fl flipped the puck uh, up into the air. I think I think it went up in, off the net before yeah. it hit the Wildcat yep. glove. Anyway, we play on. Aiden Miller between the pipes for Park. He's got the shutout going so far. Top 13 shots that he's seen. Only had 15 saves the other night in Park's 6 3 season opener over win over Forest Lake. And there's Glide, that's save number 14 for him. The two minutes gone by, third period. Gabe Glide getting his third start of the year for the Wildcats. Jack Schneiderhan, the other se uh, senior netminder for the Cats. See plenty of Jack throughout the year as well. O'Leary in front, nobody there wearing white. Cottage Grove turns, goes. They're going to make a switch behind the play of, I think, four players. Student section like that one as a Cottage Grove player hits the ice. That was Sand. Great individual effort by O'Leary earlier. Unlucky for him that it just didn't come off into an offensive chance. Prouty trying to get or check that that's 17 for the Wildcats. Trying to get that puck going. Up the uh, long shot. And it goes through. Hudson Kerr with the goal. Cats are on the board. Hudson Kerr's got to skate all the way down to the other end so he can celebrate with his fans. But big goal for Hudson Kerr and these Wildcats. Nice job climbing, starting to climb back into this game. It was a shot. Much Miller's gonna, this puck's gonna find Kerr. And Miller gets a glove to it, but it just goes, trickles up and over his glove. Looks back, he says, man, that thing got in. <laughs> and it did, in fact. So the, time of, the time of that one will be 246. I'm gonna tell you right now, one more goal for the Wildcats. Things will get a little interesting in this game. Park was offside, I believe, coming into the zone. Robbins got their own assist on the Kerr goal. And Miller, who has been good all night, Mike Cook, saw that all the way in. It just hit his glove and went up and over. It's, it wasn't that he didn't see it or that he was screened. His defense didn't really leave him hanging there. It's right. just that one was just a misplay for him. Yep. Yeah, now, he, he now he's got to shake that off. Yep, call that a softball, and as you just mentioned, it's how do you bounce back from that? Kept in briefly by Cottage Grove. Well, they say that they actually are able to control the puck back in the Wildcat zone with Corkish. Cats try to get the outlet pass. 
Lockenmeyer getting hit hard right inside the penalty box by Schwartz. Lockenmeyer a little cross check to Schwartz after the fact. I'm sure it was just a tap though. Love tap, absolutely. Absolutely. Got his drove opportunity. Couldn't quite get his man coming down. That was rude trying to feed Corkish. Both teams making big changes as the puck deep into the cottage drove zone. Net is off. Not sure that's what the whistle was for. But we've got an interference call going against Cottage Grove's number 10, Jackson Rood. I did not see that. I was watching the puck go into the zone. I think it was behind the play, Mike. I don't know that we're going to get a replay on it because I think our cameras were probably looking at the puck. I think it was behind the play. Uh, and I didn't, I, I didn't see it either, so I can't comment on it necessarily with respect to that. But it it's, certainly gives the Wildcats a big opportunity here, Mike. Cats 0 for 1 on the power play tonight. Minor penalty has been assessed for the whole pack. Number 10, Jackson Aru. Two minutes for interference. Interference is the call. 10, in Roo. front, shot. Rebound to there. Puck is scattered around. And kept in. However, back at the point. Prouty, nice job of keeping it in. Murray, far side. Prouty, Murray. Murray looking to set up in the circle. Sends it down low. Back out. Trying to get Prouty. He pinched in. Going the other way is Kaplan. He's got two tonight for the Wolfpack. Kaplan back in front. Gorgeous play by Prouty to break that one up. That had goal written all over it by Destasio. Well, it was Gabe Gly doing his best Dominic Hoshik impersonation, just <laughs> throwing his body around, hoping. Cats, opportunity, Clark! I'm not sure Miller got that or he missed the net. I think Miller. I, I, think, he, I think he missed, but. Oh my wow. goodness. There was the, there that, was the goal you needed. That was a big opportunity for Clark and unfortunately for him and, and the Wildcats, it just did not come off. Nice job that time by Talich for Carnage Drove. Got in the way of that puck, able to knock it back down into the zone. Well, I hope you folks on, on, on the broadcast, I hope you've stuck with us because you're seeing an entertaining third period regardless of what that, that scoreboard looks like. You've got two teams here, neither one has decided this game is over yet. Green line out there right now for the Wildcats. Farley Conk Prong, oh, opportunity. And once again, that's Talage. Couldn't quite put it home. He had one earlier tonight. Yeah, great effort by Talage there. He, he paid for it a little bit as he, his momentum. You know, I mean, that's the, that's the unfortunate reality of, you know, if you're gonna beat three defenders, watch here as this puck gets flipped up out of the zone. Oh, check it, this pass. is. And Clark. Clark, Clark squares to it. Oh, he, he was in his skates a little bit. He had to dig it out of his skates. That's part, part of the reason he didn't catch that clean. If he had caught it clean, I like his chances. Oh! <laughs> quick shot, quick goal. 5-1, Park. Gavin Moss, his second of the night. I don't want to take anything away from Moss. You have to make the shot to be able to score, but that was just a little too soft, Mike Cook. Just off the faceoff, seen all the way in, and I think Goliath thought that was going to go up and over the bar, and it didn't. Yep, just off the draw, quick shot. Well, you think about how much this game has changed in the last minute with Clark having that golden opportunity. And instead of a two goal game, it's back to four. Jeez. Third assist of the night, by the way, for Owen Corkish. And a shorthanded goal. Yes, you're right. So they've got two power plays and a shorty tonight. All the way down. No. I'm not sure why that's not icing. They're going to say maybe a left before the penalty was over. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't I think that must be what they're going to say. I guess. That's why we're up here. Yeah. 10.49 to go in regulation. 5-1 Wolfpack. My career as a hockey referee has been mercifully short. And that one, Miller got the save on that one off the shot from Lockenmeyer. Eddie Moore for the Cats. Tries to get it through. That bounced off a couple of skates and Parks can be able to get this one out of the zone. Good hustle that time, and we're going to get a penalty. It's like on Park. Yeah, Lockenmeyer baited him into it, and he, he managed to pull it off. Wildcats still have possession of the yes, puck, though. Do. 
see if they're able to take advantage, yep. and the answer is no. And back in the second period, we didn't know who 37 was. Well, we found out it's Braden Cordes. Cordes now on the score sheet for a minor penalty. I was going to say, maybe, maybe he can get by with saying, hey, coach, it wasn't me. It was the other guy. It was it was number 40. <laughs> I'm number 40. Who is this guy? 40 anyway. on your program. 40 yeah. on your program, 37 in, the, in your box. Right. 6.48 time of this no-no. There have not been a lot of, I mean, the shots are 20 to 15. It's not been an outrageous one-way traffic, but, man, credit to the Park, Park Wolfpack. They've got five on the board. Isaac Mark for the Cats. Kerr. The Cats so far, two games this year, they've won. They had 29 shots on goal in each. The one they lost, they only had 13. There's a goal in front. O'Leary, I believe it is. I think you're right, Mike. O'Leary doing a nice job. He had some great effort earlier in this period. Was unlucky that he didn't have an offensive helper to help him out there. But that time, O'Leary sets up in front. The puck gets moved around well on the power play. And then he's able to tap that in. Watch him turn it in from Robbins. From, I think it's going to be from Robbins and Martin. So Martin and Robbins, I think. That was a great feed from Martin. 5-2. And for Egan, that snaps their power playlist goal streak at nine. Finally got one home. Penalty up coming behind the play. It's going to be on the Wildcats. Robbins got the lone assist, by the way. Lockenmeyer is going to go to the box. He's pleading his case. I didn't see what happened. I it, just saw he and a player tied up behind He the and net. one of the Wolfpack players were tied up well behind the play. Watch here as Lockenmeyer, we'll see it right here. Lockenmeyer and one of the Wolfpack players get tied up as the puck moves forward. The two of them. Might have been a little the extra. Two of them, yeah, there's extra some extra. Out there. <laughs> Holding the call. Uh, the official's credit, he was right there. Yeah, the official was right there. He saw it clean as day, but for the Wildcats, this is a penalty that they can ill afford at this point in the game. Whatever slim chance they have to climb back into this game to make it competitive. It's at part two of three with a man advantage. They also have a shorty. He's not going to survive. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you've got Park with great special teams work here. Wildcats seem to be better five on five. They do. Again, thank you to our great ETV crew, our award-winning ETV crew, for putting these sights and sounds together. And ladies and gentlemen, as Mike, my colleague Mike Cook indicated. Oh, Kerr's going to, Kerr loses his stick. Penalty is going to be on Kerr. I, <laughs> okay. So Kerr without a stick. So it's six on four because the goalie has pulled. Quick shot. That goes wide. Puck is going to come out. Cottage Grove forced to regroup. Kerr's going to get a twig from the bench. Cottage Grove brings it in. The other thing is they're killing time right here. Egan is on the power play. Or no, Egan's already a man down. Check that. Taking an extra advantage of a six on four. Well, and of course, the chance you can't give up practically. You're not going to give up a, 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 a shorthanded goal either if you're if you if the other team can't touch the possess the puck. Long shot goal <laughs> from way out. Jackson Rood six to Park. Rood's first of the game. Well, he's had assists already tonight. He's what a nice setup here by the Wolfpack. Moving it around, just a quick shot. Couldn't tell if there were a, there were a lot of bodies in front of Gly at that point, but he's reaching well to his left. It's unlucky that time for Gly that he just wasn't wasn't able to corral that one. But that was an absolute rocket, Mike. Well, and not. the Wildcats are still going to be on the power play here. Say, excuse me, in the penalty kill was, here. Yeah, because they were already a man down and there was the delayed call. So Kerr's going to sit in the box. 
This penalty will be coming at 8.45, which is the time of the goal as well. And I did not see what happened. All I know is Kerr lost his stick behind yeah, the player. Kerr, Kerr's stick got between a player's legs or around a player's legs. That player then skated through the stick and took the stick with him. Okay. But I'm not sure how that's a trip or a hook or anything like that. I, I, I don't know how you can call a player when, when the guy, I mean, if somebody runs over your stick, does that make oh, you? Larry, oh, no. Anyway. Yeah. I, said, I, didn't, I didn't see it. I just saw the well, stick laying there. And the referee from the top of the top of the blue line made the call. The referee down low didn't, which was kind of interesting. Well, chirping behind the play between a couple of players. I want the referees to keep a tight lid on this stuff, make sure that there's no more foolishness. Absolutely. We don't want any of these players getting hurt here tonight. Right. Big hit that time. Prouty knocks his man to the glass right by the student section. At the same time, the Wildcats definitely want to demonstrate to their coaching staff they're not quitting. Right. Shot through. Lies able to steer that one aside. Fly a rebound. Corkish, four assists now tonight. Cats able to poke that one out all the way down. 7.09 to go in regulation. 49 to go, man advantage, power four, Parker Cottage Grove. Park still missing a player. They were doing a line change, but I don't know if they're changing up their lineup or they're bringing on another line, but for a good chunk there, they were short. Speaking of short. That was Caden Schwartz that couldn't handle that. Robbins opportunity. Hustling back defensively. Opportunity, Cats. Eddie Moore. He loses the puck to Root, who made the stop moments earlier to help Park thwart an Egan opportunity. I'd love to see Grayson Robbins just shoot that puck. I think he got in a little deep and wasn't quite sure where he wanted to go with it. Corkish runs into Glide, nothing intentional there. They play on. 6.19 to go. Park power play is now over as Hudson Kerr back on the ice. Moss opportunity, hustles down against Wood of Egan. They go to the boards. Murray for Egan gets in there. He bumps with Corkish. Cats are struggling to get it out of their own end right now. They tried to get it ahead that time. Went off the stick of Jensen. Garrett Colkin in there, 21 in white. And here comes Park the other way. This is Cordes. Jensen up in there. We got a couple guys behind the play. O'Leary goes almost into the bench. He and Jake Young tangled. Court of circle sends it across near side. 24 for Park is Tommy Lucas. We haven't called that name yet tonight. He's a defender in green. And neither team giving up on this. They're going to make every, every last second, every last shift count out here on the ice. Hey, by the way, it is the holiday season approaching. And Egan High School, they're collecting money December 4th through the 13th as part of the Armful of Love campaign through 360 communities that helps out families in need right here in Dakota County. The goal as the school is to collect $5,000, so any money that can be contributed is greatly appreciated. Cash your checks made out to Egan High School. You can also donate on My Payments Plus. So if you have a student at Egan High School, you're well aware of what My Payments Plus is. Again, armful of love. Campaign starts on the 4th. Goes through the 13th to help those less off during this holiday season. Inside five to go in this one. 6-2 Wolfpack. Second straight game. Park has got six. Second straight game. The Cats have two. Deep into the Egan zone. You do get a feeling from this Egan Wildcat hockey team that they're going to be more successful in lo maybe low scoring games, right? I yeah. mean, I think that's probably, that's, I mean, again, you know, if the other team scores six, scores six, and now we're going to have a penalty against the Wolfpack. But, I mean, but I think if, I think if the Wildcats, the Wildcats recipe for this season, Mike Cook might be, hey, 
we, we play great defense, we collapse down, we play good defense, we make sure that our goalkeeper doesn't have too many shots on him, doesn't, you know, doesn't have, get, we clear rebounds, and then we just look, ti- we go timely, we look for timely goals, you know, counterattack goals, if you will. Um, that, that kind of, you know, just, it's not, I wouldn't say it's a high octane, high scoring kind of team, at least, to, at least so far this season. I want to correct something I said a moment ago. Cats actually had three goals the last game. They had two in regulation and then got the winner in overtime. But every game this year now, the Cats have got two goals in regulation. They worked the 2-1 to one win over Woodbury. Then they fell 9-2 to Champlin Park. 3-2 to two over Eastridge in OT. And now here tonight, they're down by a 6-2 count with four minutes to go in this one. Opportunity here for the Wildcats to have a credible power play opportunity. Create some real offense. Harley KP bringing it in for the Wildcats. Back down to the zone. Wildcats, 18 shots on goal in this hockey game. They had 10, I believe, early in the second. So. Deep into the zone. O'Leary back to Kerr. Kirk keeps it at the half wall. Dot, low. Back in front. Oh, nice setup. Miller, a big save that time. It was Coink Prong that got robbed that time by Miller. Kerr, no, didn't get all of that one. Kept in Lance Murray. There's Kerr with 51 to go in the man advantage. Kerr up top. Murray, nope, he didn't get all that one either. Bounces in front. Miller wisely putting that mitt down on it. <laughs> We have three minutes to go on this one. It was a nice bounce for the Wildcats. Good job by Miller claiming that one. Murray just did not, just um, just a little bit off, but it came of, off a nice rebound off the boards for him. And if Miller doesn't claim that quickly, there's a chance for a scramble there. 100%. And I, I know there's only three minutes left, and it's a four-goal game, but it's, you know, it's still hockey. Absolutely. So Lance Murray to regroup. He said Lance Murray, one of the captains for this Wildcat squad. Eddie Moore, the other. They're both seniors. So is Danny Lockenmeyer. He wears the A for the Wildcats. And one thing I know Coach Carlson said, and the assistants as well, is really good group like that. They've done a very good job as a trio of incorporating everyone on this team, be it whether you're a junior, whether you're a sophomore, whether you're a senior. You know, whether you've been here for three years or, you know, this is your first skate as a varsity player. Down low, Eddie Moore. Park back to full strength. They hit the outside of the cage. Miller is there. That's actually the goal for the Wildcats. Lockin might be able to stuff it in on the left post. Well, Danny Lockin, I was going to say, Danny Lockenmeyer pulling a rabbit out of his hat, Mike Cook. Nicely done, young man. I'm not sure Danny knew he had that goal initially. Let's see if we have a chance to have the replay on this one. We do. Of course we do. Nice drop there by Moore. Look at that. And that sneaks in. And it, I, th- uh, I think the first one was saved by Miller. And I, th- and I think Lockenmeyer then pokes it home. Well, it went backhand forehand to himself. on that one. So the only player with a two-point night is Grayson Robbins for the Wildcats. He's got a couple of helpers. Goals have come from Hudson Kerr, Colin O'Leary, and then you just saw right there Danny Lockenmeyer. Timeout taken by the Eagan Wildcats with the buck 59 to go. Uh, this is where this is where the Wildcats really, I wouldn't say suffer, but they've, they've dug themselves a, a big hole, right, Mike? I mean, if you know, if they give up four or five, you know, they can climb back into this with a power play with the last two minutes, but suddenly with a six, you know, giving up six, it's just, it's probably just too much, too, you know, it's too much, but at the same time, 6-4 would feel a lot better than 6-3. By the way, Lockemeyer, that's his third of the season, third straight game with a tally for the Wildcats. There's Jeff Corkish, as we said, first-year man down at 
over, I should say, over at Park of Cottage Grove. Yeah, it's more of an over yeah, rather than a move. down. You, you know. came from Hastings. I would say Hastings is down yeah. uh, on the map. I think but that's right. You can cross the bridge, or, you know, they're kind of one and the same. But um, Ooh. anyway. Ooh, careful. Careful. Aren't they Aren't they big rivals? Probably. Ra Ra Raiders and the Wolfpack? Uh, probably. But we'll go with it. <laughs> we'll go. Probably not as much as the Wolfpack along with Eastridge and Woodbury because they're all oh, South yeah. Washington oh, County. Yeah, yeah. And oh, yeah, yeah. The Cats were looking to make the sweep of the South Washington County schools, and it yep. ain't going to happen. Nope, and nope, nope, nope. No, nope, barring, uh, barring a, a relatively uh, impossible scenario that you and I probably cannot dream up, but... <laughs> You know, hey, every once in a while a team's got to come back from three goals with, with two minutes down, with two uh, minutes left. Yeah, I mean, never, it, yeah. You're saying Jack, there's a chance. Jack Hansen on for the field goal? <laughs> Jack Hansen for the field goal. Hey, speaking of Jack, congratulations. He's going to be playing in the uh, high school all-star football game tomorrow down at U.S. Bank Stadium. I think it was team MVP, I think I saw when they, when they had the football banquet the other night. But Jack had a couple of big awards. Shot, goal, why not? Owen Corkish. Just, yeah, with a little go-to-sleep celebration there. Well, it's a, it's appropriate. It's 7-3 now. The Wolfpack have definitely put the nice nail in the coffin here and see Prouty take his eyes off the puck, and it's a situation where Clark is breaking his neck to get back and even a little slash there, but just can't keep it out. And oh, That wasn't a little slash. <laughs> Uh, well, it was a big slash, but in any event, I mean, that's a situation where that's a situation Proudy will be, you know, Proudy's going to look at that highlight and go, oh, my goodness gracious, how did I fan on that? Because right, right. not only did I fan on it, but guess what? You know, I, you know, I, that creates an opportunity for the other team. Yep. Goal now and four assists, Clarkish. Five point night, that's pretty good for a player, is it not? It's pretty good for anybody exactly it's pretty good for a second year peewee scramble in front that's going to get one more on the board 10 goals in this hockey game just three by the home team there's curry he does have one of them you said the wildcats they go on the road tuesday the fifth big rivalry Ooh, game down at eastview robin's looking for one i don't know how that didn't get in so then they're back here on Saturday the 9th against Prior Lake. And I think I saw that's Mental Health Awareness Day. It is. The girls play in the afternoon at almost 3, and the guys are scheduled for 7.30. With JV preceding each varsity game. Good opportunity for us to focus on things a little more important sometimes than even high school hockey, even though this is Minnesota. It's a lot more. We are well, in the state of hockey, no less. Well, yeah, but... Absolutely. Mental health, always an important thing for young athletes, young students, moms and dads, everybody who's watching. You say old athletes. And That's right. That's right. So 15 seconds to go on this one. Park Cottage Grove is going to head back with a seven, looks like a seven to three win. Student section doing the hey, hey, goodbye chant. Well, next chance the Wildcats will have to face the Wolfpack will be in the section playoffs. Just a little more will be on the line come that time. It will be a little more, and I'll tell you right now, the Wolfpack looking good for that section. They've got a, I mean, it's a long season. We talked about it between the periods. The Wolfpack have a lot of games and a lot. They've still they've got to replicate this over and over again, but they've got to feel good about how they came out and played tonight. The Wolf, the, the Wolfpack, you know, they've dom you know, they've dominated the scoreboard certainly. Uh, and they were able to take advantage of all their opportunities. The Wildcats, again, Mike Cook, they didn't play bad hockey, but they didn't play well enough to win the hockey game. You know, Consistency is something they're going to look at. And Absolutely. Say, yeah, we, we've seen glimpses. But, hey, as we said, it's game four. That's right. You don't want to be playing your best hockey in, in, dis, in early December, right? You want to be playing your best hockey in February. And now, that's, now that is the, the, the charge for Coach Carlson. And the coaching staff, as well as these seniors, this this big senior group, to make sure that they are fully ready to take on the next opponent, which is of course the Eastview Lightning, next what Tuesday, I think you said. Tuesday down at Apple Valley Arena. At Apple Valley Arena, that's right. So Grandma Shirley up in Canada, I'm sure you're happy your grandson's park of Cottage Grove Wolfpack. The Eagan Wildcats by a seven to three count. And that's gonna wrap things up here from the Civic Arena. Again, he's Nathan Crown. I'm Mike Cook, and on behalf of the entire award-winning ETV crew, 
Thank you for watching, everyone, and we'll see you next time for Wildcat Hockey on the ETV.